Hey, it's Josh Stanford here, America's Attorney, and if you liked Tom Scott's video about the zone of death, and you wondered, hey, is this something I should get into? Is this where I need to take my arch nemesis? Watch till the end of this video. You may be surprised how long you'll spend in prison for killing someone in the zone of death, even though you didn't get convicted of killing someone in the zone of death. There's a 50 square mile area out in the wilderness of Yellowstone National Park in the USA, where it's said that thanks to a legal loophole, you can get- I wish I had a British accent. Or any other crimes you might want to commit. I am just about to rent that- <laughs> And a Range Rover or whatever he was in. That leads in <laughs> and out of the so-called zone of death. And before I came here, I talked to the person who discovered the zone. My point in talking about it whenever I do is not to encourage people to do this or to say, oh, it's great that people can get away with murder. Point is, I think they should fix it. That's Brian Colt, the law professor who discovered the loophole in 2005 and wrote a law journal article about it. And yes, he was the one who nicknamed it the zone of death. That's a pretty Most interesting accounts, name for how boring this legal issue are. is. There are a lot of limitations and a lot of caveats. Technicalities really matter here. And I like technicalities, so I'm going to explain this as fast as I can. Stay with me. First, if you commit a crime in the United States, you can usually be prosecuted either by the state or by the federal government, the one that's in charge of the whole country. Or both. But Yellowstone National Park. Usually both. Within its borders, only the federal government can prosecute. Now, for federal law, Congress, the people in charge in Washington, they divided the country into 94 districts. Those districts don't cross state lines. So there's a district for Northern California or Eastern Texas or for all of Arizona because there aren't many people there. With one exception, Congress gave all of Yellowstone Park to the federal district for Wyoming, despite the fact that some small parts of the park like this are actually in the states of Idaho and Montana. So right now, in this 50 square mile area, in the zone of death, I'm standing in the state of Idaho, but the federal district for Wyoming. Now, if you're accused of a crime, the Sixth Amendment to the US Constitution says that you have a right to a trial by jury, where that jury is made up of people from the state and district where the crime was committed. The Constitution could have just said state or district, or it could have just said district, but it doesn't say that. It says state and district. So for crimes committed in this weird little overlap zone, a jury would have to be picked from just the people who live in Idaho State and Wyoming District, which would be just the people who live in this zone, and the population here is zero. So no jury, which means no trial, which means in theory, no conviction. Because Congress colored outside the lines here, they would need to let you go. And to be clear, the prosecution wouldn't just concede. They would say, well, look, this is just a technicality. The problem with that is the Sixth Amendment says very clearly and plainly what it requires. In the federal system, the only one who can request a change of venue is the defendant. And that's that's not going to happen. So this is not the a defendant is the person is accused of murder still applies here. I'm not stupid enough to try and test it by committing a felony here. Apologies if you thought I was that stupid. I'm on YouTube after all. But if I did that, I would still be arrested. I would still be put on trial. Something like that has happened up in the Montana portion of the park north of here. A few people do live in that section, so it's not literally impossible to put a jury together. But there's probably not enough people to make up an impartial jury to the standards needed. There was this guy uh, some years back who poached an elk. The public defender said, well, elk well, murder. The Constitution says the jurors I, I thought this was about Montana human murder, but it's about the park. elk murder. And the judge, he said, well, yeah, that's what the Sixth Amendment says, but if I followed that, then I'd have to let him go. And I can't just let him go. I'm paraphrasing here, but there wasn't, there wasn't any additional legal reasoning. The legal histories of almost every country are littered with examples of people finding a way to bend the rules. A judge can sometimes just decide to do things their way, either for good or ill. In that case in Montana, the judge did just that. Well, the prosecutors didn't want him to appeal this. They said, look, if you plead guilty, uh, we'll let you get a reduced sentence. But one of the conditions of this is you don't appeal the zone of death issue. And... Um, he, he took the deal. He got four years! He got four years for killing an elk! But if you were planning to do something terrible here, you'd also have to make sure you committed only the one crime, and only here, which it turns out is really difficult. There's also the possibility of being prosecuted somewhere else for conspiracy, wire fraud, or firearms uh, violations, or, or any of those things. And there's also civil liability. You get sued for anything you might do there. It would be very easy to fix. All Congress has to do 
is pass a statute that says the District of Wyoming is Wyoming. Yeah, but you, you can't get Congress to agree on anything. I did ask the obvious question, has Professor Colt ever visited here? And he said, well, there's this book where the zone of death is part of the plot. I actually bought a copy and was going to bring it out there. It's on my desk in my hotel room because I forgot it. Anyway, they flew him out to the central parts of Yellowstone, the parts that are actually in Wyoming, the pretty bits, to do some media interviews. Someone said, do you, do you guys want to go out to the Idaho portion for a photo op? And I said, hell no. I am not going to tempt the forces of irony uh, like that. So let's say the worst happens. Someone comes out here, commits a crime in the zone. As far as we know, it's never been done, but what does Professor Colt think would happen? The U.S. Attorney's Office in Wyoming is not just going to roll over. But people are let go on technicalities from time to time, and this one at least is actually in the Constitution in black and white. Congress has been on notice for 18 years now. They could have fixed it. I am now going to leave either before someone else decides to commit a crime here on me or before I get eaten alive by mosquitoes. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there and tell you what is wrong with committing murder in the zone of death. If you're going to commit murder in the zone of death, you need to get a victim into the zone of death with you. How are you going to get that victim with you? It's someone that you know, because there aren't any people there. So you're either going to text or call your victim, probably someone that you already know, or you're going to go pick them up and you're going to ride together in the car. Listen to this right here. Attempted murder is committed if the defendant did something that was a substantial step toward killing the victim that strongly corroborated the defendant's intent to commit the crime. So they took a step that can be sending a text message, going to pick someone up, putting a knife or gun in the car that you're getting into. Like, look, as soon as you have made plans to bring this person in, you have already committed attempted murder. And you've done that outside the zone of death. And you may think, well, that's not a big deal. Uh, it's not even actually murder. It's just attempted murder. The second thing that they have to do is that when they took that step, they have to have the intent to kill. So if it involves the weapon, if it involves saying, hey, let's go to this one secluded area, the jury is going to chomp at the bit to say, oh, you killed this person and we can't convict you of that, but you thought you had a technicality? No, 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 no. The U.S. attorney is going to make sure that the jury has the technicality. And here's the technicality. Under federal law, the sentence for attempted murder is life in prison. So the zone of death is not a great place to go to kill someone. You could end up serving just the exact same amount of time because of a conviction of attempted murder that occurred outside the zone of death as you could if you got convicted for the actual murder inside the zone of death. So what's the takeaway from this? Don't kill anybody, not in the zone of death, not outside the zone of death.